to speak since he has silenced so much at his own high school. Um, again, we support the First Amendment too, which is freedom of speech, along with the Second Amendment, um, which is a, what a lot of people don't understand. Those are so tied together. Um, next, we are going to have Elizabeth Scott. She's in the 39th Legislative um, District. She's running as a senator, and she was a previous um, House legislator. Thank you. How are you guys today? Doesn't Liberty smell great? I am Elizabeth Scott, former state representative from the 39th Legislative District, and I'm running for senator up there. I believe in liberty, and that's the most important thing. I served from 2013 to January of 2017, and then I passed the baton to John Coster when he was sworn in. Took about a year and a half off, and now I'm back in the fight and coming out swinging. I'd like to start, I know most of you are already familiar with our United States Constitution Second Amendment. Of course you are, you could probably all quote it by heart. But in our state constitution, I'd like to start with that today. In Article 1, Section 24 of the Washington State Constitution, it says, Section 24, right to bear arms. The right of the individual citizen to bear arms in defense of himself or the state shall not be impaired but nothing in this section shall be construed as authorizing individuals or corporations to organize, maintain, or employ an armed body of men. All right, I didn't see anything in there about hunting, did you? No. Or recreational shooting? No. no, it's about the defense of liberty and protection of our lives and the lives of our loved ones and securing the free state. I grew up patriotic. My father served as an air medic in the United States Air Force. My grandfathers served in the United States Army. And one of my grandfathers, actually, I did not get to meet because he was killed in action in France fighting the Nazis, so fighting against tyranny. So I understood patriotism and I understood liberty, I thought, until I went to teach in China, Red Communist China, for two years. From 1989, right after the Tiananmen Massacre, uh, to 1991. And let me tell you, that's when I really grew to appreciate our liberty and the way that our Constitution protects it. In, in China, thank you, in China I was given several IDs that I had to carry with me at all times. This is one of them. It was called my red card. You can see how red and shiny it still is. Yes, China is a communist country, and we were assigned, uh, and the Chinese were assigned, where to work, where to live. They were moved from city to city, or even province to province across their country, if the government told them they had assigned them a job in a different place. In addition to that, we were, we were required to carry an ID for our health care. Well, now it's all you know, digitized and it's on our phones, but I can smell tyranny from 2,000 miles away and I smell it growing. So that's why I started to run back in 2009 for the first time. Now, most of the statists in America don't call themselves communists. They call themselves other things and we all know what they call themselves. But they have the same mentality, don't they? They believe that government knows better than you. And they believe that they should decide, that government should decide what jobs are not allowed. Statists attempt to shut down entire industries, such as coal or oil or nuclear or logging. Statists who are elected to serve us right here in this capital tell us that we would all be better off moving to the cities on the I-5 corridor and then they enact policies and taxes to drive us to it. So that's why they pour so much of our gas tax and transportation fees into mass transit instead of on roads and maintaining our bridges. Even some of the rural Democrats are now exposing this. Did you know that? Yeah. They're breaking rank. There's division. Yeah. Senator, <laughs> Senator Tim Sheldon, Democrat from the 35th District, published an op-ed last year and he said, our state's environmental groups have worked with like-minded legislators, right here, to force ever greater numbers into densely populated cities. Sounds like China, doesn't it? Yeah. 
apparently with the thought that the rest of the state ought to be set aside as a nature preserve. That was published last year in the Washington State Wire. Look, yeah, Boo is right. My point is that many of us have reached the point where we don't care what their next liberty-restricting gun proposal is, we are a flat-out no! Because we have seen that statists don't ever compromise. They're constantly moving the discussion to the farther, farther towards tyranny. As Ronald Reagan said, you and I are told increasingly that we have to choose between left and right. Well, I like to suggest that there's no such thing as a left or a right, Reagan said. There's only an up or a down. Up to man's age-old dream, the ultimate in individual freedom consistent with law and order, or down to the ant heap of totalitarianism. And regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked this downward course." End quote. So when they say, I, that's not me, that's Reagan. Cheer for Reagan for a moment. <laughs> so when they say, here's a common sense bill, look at who's sponsoring it. Do they have a track record of increasing government control or decreasing it? Increasing the size of government or decreasing it? Down towards statism and totalitarianism or up towards liberty, which brings prosperity because it allows creativity to flourish. Do they even believe the first sentence in our state constitution, which says in the preamble, we the people of the state of Washington, grateful to the supreme ruler of the universe for our liberties, do ordain this constitution. Our state's fathers knew that. They knew. Our state's founding fathers knew that our rights don't come from government. Thank God, because if they it came from government, government could take them away. They are born, we're born with those rights. They're inalienable rights. You can't cut them off. They still exist. All right, so how many of you have a cell phone with you right now? I want you to put this number in your phones if you haven't already. This number works all throughout the year, whether the legislators are in session or not, whether they're in their offices down here or in their offices back at home, or going out speaking and doing little ground digging ceremonies, you know what I'm talking about, okay? So this phone number is 1-800-562-6000. That is the legislative hotline number. It doesn't even matter if you don't know your district or who your legislators are. Put this number in your phone. The legislative hotline number is one 800 Five, six, two, six thousand. Now I want you to share that with your friends when you get back home. You guys are the ones who made it here today, but I know you have big circles of friends. Every time you think about how angry you are at what's happening, I want you to call that number. It doesn't. You don't have to have a bill number to talk about. Just call them and say, I'm fed up. I'm fed up. No more of these stupid gun grabbing bills. Don't make it more difficult for me to protect myself and my loved ones. Make it more harder for the criminals. Don't make it harder for us. That's ridiculous. All right, any topic, pro or con, all year long. And of course, be civil but firm. And just tell them, don't restrict our rights anymore. It says right in our state constitution, for the security of us and our loved ones and for the free state. Now we are here today to defend our liberty and our natural rights. We will stand firm. I am Elizabeth Scott. My website is elizabethforestate.com with the number four in the middle. I'm running for Senate. I hope to be serving you next year. And please remember, even if you can't vote for me, you can help out through the website and by liking my page on Facebook and all of that. All right? And donations. Thank you. God bless America. Just so the speakers know, um, we have a media tent over there with the brown for interviews. For any of the speakers, if you guys want to go over there, if you're waiting to speak or after you're done. Um, and then next we have Jim Walsh. He's in the 19th district. One thing I'll point out is he's the third Republican to serve in the 19th uh, legislative district since 1940. Um, he uh, represents.